I'm coming to you this morning live from Mission, Texas, the epicenter of the ongoing border crisis, the Rio Grande Valley. We arrived yesterday and hit the ground running, taking a tour with U.S. Border Patrol to see the realities of what is taking place. As you know, 172,000 migrants coming at, to the border in the month of March alone that was up from 100,000 in February. On our tour, we encountered some harrowing sights. A group of migrant women from Guatemala found wandering in the brush. We saw one of the many gaps in the border wall, and we learned how drug and human traffickers are flooding this region. Supervisor Alvarez, tell us where we are right now. Right now we're in the town of the small town of Pinitas, Texas. It's just west of McAllen, Texas, Mission, Texas. Um, we brought you out here so you can kind of get a, a view of the river, how close it is to Mexico. What kind of narcotics volume are you seeing? Here in this sector, we account for 40% of all narcotic seizures between the ports of entry. And what about the human trafficking, the smugglers taking people across? Tell me about that. What kind of volume are you seeing there? Okay. So last year we saw 90,000 uh, entries, 90,000 in the entire year. This year we're already close to 200,000. They're coming here in boats and they're what? The, yeah. the, Swimming, so, what are, how are they getting across? So right now, there's a high likely chance that there's a, there's a smuggler in, in that brush just across us. Uh, this is a real popular spot. Um, they'll, they'll, what they'll do is they'll pay a smuggler, and when I mean they, the smuggling organizations, the cartels, they'll pay these kids, usually they're juveniles, uh, to stay in the trees all day. And they're just scouting. That's what they call scouting. They're just viewing where their agents are at. I'm sure they're calling out that there's an agent further uh, downriver and that there was an agent here. Another common tactic is we're going to see right now large groups uh, of, of families and unaccompanied children. They'll cross some 50, 100 people at a time, 150 we've seen at one time. Okay. No tienen agua? Pues ven para acá. Acá tenemos agua. Vamos. How long have they been walking? One hour. They got turned around. That's the problem. The smuggler leaves them and says, just walk north. They don't know where north is, so they've been lost in this brush. And if I wouldn't have found them, it's about to get dark. Who knows how long they were going to stay out here. So they were with smugglers, and then the smug smuggler, the smuggler just took off. Yeah, he just dropped them off on the riverbank and said, just walk. Where are they from? De dónde son, señoritas? Guatemala, Honduras, alguien de Honduras? Nadie. Todas de Guatemala. All of them from Guatemala. So wait, you're going to New Jersey. New Jersey. You're going to Colorado, New Hampshire. Uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. Indiana. Indiana. And you're going to Indiana. How are they going to get there? Y cómo pensaban llegar? Through the grace of God. ¿Cuánto pagaron para llegar a los Estados Unidos? ¿Y usted? How much? How much? A long trailer. Sí. Sí. They say they're alone. They, nobody comes. No help. And that's just came here from Guatemala. So, Supervisor Alvarez, there was a plan at one point to connect the, the walls. Right. With the uh, the new border wall construction, there was funding. to The plan was to build a wall and eventually connect all of this section. This is old legacy wall that was built in 2008. Um, and, and the plan was eventually to, you know, with, through funding to connect the entire RGB sector and then along the entire southwest border. The cartels and the drug smugglers are running this area. If anybody tries to get on any of these paths to get into America without the drug smugglers and the cartels, you could bet those people are in huge trouble, uh, and they will uh, they will find them. I want to bring in the panel to talk more about this. Dagan McDowell, I've been watching the show. Joe Concha, Lee Carter, Dagan. It's been incredible to be on the ground here. We've talked about this subject so much, but to actually see people coming across, hiding in the brush, is, it's just incredible. And from here, obviously, Dagan, they're coming into the interior of our country. And you've illustrated uh, just how easy it is. But this isn't just about the administration ignoring our immigration laws and just opening up the borders to illegal immigrants. But it's about these individuals, these women and children who are in danger. It's about handing power and literally money to drug cartels and human traffickers. I just, I, I, I'm going to shut up. I just want you to keep talking about what you've seen. 
Well, I mean, the, the drug cartels are charging uh, five to $10,000 uh, in order to get you across. If you're coming from anywhere other than the Northern Triangle, Guatemala or, or Honduras or El Salvador, it's going to be much more. If you're coming from the Middle East, if you're coming from Asia, then the cartels will charge you so much more. A third of the women have reported that they are getting sexually abused on the way here. When we ran into that first group that you saw a minute ago, they were so afraid to discuss who they were with. You know, they've been told, when you get stopped, do not mention the groups that brought you here. Don't tell them you were with anyone. I mean, it's obviously ridiculous to think that that group, a 17, 18-year-old woman with a five-month-old baby in her arms got here on her own. I mean, they are getting help from the smugglers, and then they are paying them off once they get to their destination or paying them off in advance. We saw a ton of garbage on the ground. The smugglers uh, drop the, the, the people off, and then they get out of town. They leave. They go back to, into Mexico. And, you know, the, the, the people People who are trying to get into the interior of America are leaving their stuff. We saw children's shoes, we saw clothing, we saw their bracelets strewn everywhere. They're getting bracelets from the smugglers because that's how the smugglers are tracking them. So you get a bracelet and that will tell people what group you're with, what, what smuggling group you're with. Um, it will tell them if you're paid up or not. And then when once you know people get in to America, they get to Texas, and they take the bracelet off, they throw it on the floor, they're trying to uh, assimilate and, and, and get here and eventually uh, get a job and, and, and live here in America. I mean, that's, that's obviously the point. Um, I spoke with one agent on the phone before even getting here, and, and he told me that they have, uh, they have collected 69 pounds of fentanyl. That's up 5,400 uh, percent this year. They have found 49 pounds of heroin. That's up 4,000 percent. Hard narcotics causing multiple deaths coming in on a regular basis. So you've got drug smuggling. You've got human trafficking. We have a heroin problem in this country, mm -hmm. and it begins here. This area is the biggest area where marijuana comes from as well, but that's the least of it. It's really the fentanyl mm -hmm. and heroin that is being found. They found meth on the floor. So the drugs are everywhere, and the footprint of these smugglers are all over this region. It's, it's really such a sad situation to see these people putting their lives on the line to try to slip through, cut the line, if you will. Don't forget, the U.S. issues one million green cards every year. We have a structure in place for legal immigration, but they are coming, cutting the line because the smugglers are enabling them, enabling them to do so. Marie, I just want to just say this out loud. This is just incredible what you're doing. Uh, that you're at the border and telling all of these stories and just explaining to the American people what is going on. Because it, out of Washington and the White House, it's just being ignored. Yeah, and you know, Dagan, we just saw the headlines that now they are lowering the restrictions on sanctuary cities. There's really no effort to recognize the massive danger that we are talking about here. It's not just what it's doing to American citizens. I mean, that's a whole other economic story, the fact that right. all of these people are coming into the country and they're, you know, sucking up the resources and jobs of Americans. That's one part of the story. The other part of the story is the incredible danger that everybody is, is, is in. People from the Northern Triangle getting raped, you know, having this dangerous uh, occurrences uh, with these smugglers and drug cartels. So this is a big story. It continues to unravel. We're taking a boat trip today to see the entire coast, to see really where the active areas is. And, of course, in the next hour, I'll talk with A.G. Uh, Ken Paxton, who right. will be joining me here.